All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, fellow pandemonium travelers, this is Seattle Pandemonium Shutdown, day 233 by my count. So what's going on? What's going down? We, uh, what are we, like nine days out from the election now? Uh, everything is in complete chaos. Hunter Biden is a fuck-up. Joe Biden calls a lid at 10 a.m. I wish I could do such things. And Trump is dancing to YMCA at his multiple rallies per day. We, again, have this phenomenon. It, it's like 2016 all over again. The polls are saying Biden, Biden, Biden. My, my contention, my assessment, my analysis says uh, different. It says Trump, Trump, Trump. We're going to see. And uh, I'll, I'll reiterate, based on last week's like sort of a video, a video analysis of uh, the Hunter Biden content that has come out, Hunter is not running for president, although it does reflect negatively on Joe. And the real issue is the money and China, not Hunter Biden being a crack addict and apparently knows how to fucking party. Dude, hit me up. Let's fucking let's fucking let's party, bro. Um, but other than that, I wanted to I wanted to cover some what I thought was like old ground, but it's what's old is new again. Is uh, the passing of the great James Randi. People might not know who James Randi is. James Randi was a magician. I would say was. He he was until passing last week. God, he had to be in his 90s. I don't know his actual age. He had to be 90-something. Um, he was a friend of Johnny Carson. Uh, made appearances on Johnny Carson's show. Uh, I believe he was Canadian, but I won't hold that, hold that against him. Uh... He rocked, a, he rocked a wizard beard for a long time, and he was a magician. He was a, you know, stage magician. But he, the amazing Randy, committed himself for many years to debunking fraudulent psychics and mediums and things. And he had what they called the Million Dollar Challenge. Uh, if you could demonstrate some kind of uh, sixth sense, supernatural power, supernatural occurrence you could get a million dollars. And many tried. They were revealed as frauds, or they never actually committed to trying, at which point they're basically admitting that they were frauds. Uh, he, he debunked dowsers and cold readers and, you know. Uh, Yuri Geller. Yuri Geller, like, went to court with him and stuff about whether or not he actually was bending spoons with his mind. No, no, he, he, was, he was not. He was not bending spoons with his mind. They were parlor tricks, as they say. And yet he made tons of money and fame off of, you know, basically acting like he could, he had telepathy or telekinesis or whatever. And James Randi exposed this by demonstrating the same thing, but showing you the trick. Oh, I have a mirror in my hand. Oh, I bent it when I was, I moved my chair. I bent the spoon, and there, he there's a bunch of very, there's a bunch of good talks that he gave, uh, like lectures essentially, where he starts out the, the the talk where he's leaning in, talking into a microphone, and he's got his glasses on, and then he reveals like, oh yeah, this microphone doesn't actually is not actually on. That's not the microphone that's that I'm talking into. Oh, and these glasses have no lenses in the frames, right? And it's a little, it's a little uh, uh, deception, but that's the point: is it's these little deceptions that pile up into a big deception. Like I got you to think I'm talking to your dead loved one through a crystal ball or whatever, and now I have you. Now you believe me. Now you're going to keep giving me money because I've deceived you by, the, you know, like, again, like these small deceptions pile up into a bigger deception. James Randi was just honest about it. 
And it's one of these things where you, when you start to sort of look at the world this way, like look at the world as though basically everyone's trying to deceive you into doing something that you shouldn't be falling for. That's, I mean everything, vote for me, fall in love with me, buy my product, go here, go there, you're, I'm your boss, you have to do what I say. Take everything with a grain of salt and uh, plant yourself and go, no, and see what happens. When you don't fall for the big shtick, the big thing, the big con, uh, watch what happens. Because people get really mad if you don't just go along with what you are expected to go along with. And um, this is why things like, you know, like atheists have been killed and stuff in the past because it's like, nah, I don't believe in your God. Well, never mind being an atheist, just believing in a different God. Yeah, I don't believe in your God. You'll, you'll be put to death. So there are consequences for being a contrarian. Uh, but you only have you only have one life to live and again these deceptions that we self-impose they pile upon one another to the point where you you start to believe one absurdity and another and another and another and I believe it was Voltaire it might be somebody else but I believe it was Voltaire said so those who can make you believe absurdities will make you commit atrocities. And that is kind of how we kind of how we live. We we live on this razor's edge of making the right decisions. And the right decision isn't always the obvious decision and it's not always the popular decision. So to like kind of loop the politics back in there. However you decide to vote this uh, you know, election term you you will make somebody mad because somebody will think you're a bad person for the decision that you've made. But other people being mad at your decision isn't really the threshold that we're aiming for. What we're aiming for is you making the best decision. The, the, all I can ask of you is you making the best, most honest decision based on the information you have available to you. And... If you're not looking at all at the, all the information I'm looking at, then I will think your decision is suspect, but you can't be held to the standard of me maybe knowing more or having more time to look at more information. So you have to make the best decision you ha you think you can with the information you have available and apply that, but apply that standard to other parts of your life like Look at infomercials and stuff. Like, this was one of James Randi's things, was like, he would he would look at like, uh, uh, oh, what's that called? Uh, su succession. <laughs> uh, hyper, uh, God, what's it called? Oh, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Um, Oh, God, I'm spacing, just completely blanking. Yeah, yeah. Be, be crazy not in front of me. Um, he, he went to, he actually went before Congress, if I recall, and uh, took that medicine. What is it called? I have hydroxychloroquine on my brain. What is it shit called? They, they put it in water and they, they shake it. <laughs> What is it called? It's garbage. It's fake medicine. Uh, but he like took a box of this fake medicine and uh, downed a whole box of it in front of Congress and said, you know, this is not medicine. You should uh, you should not you should regulate this as though it's not medicine. Holy, holy fuck. Um, but yeah, but aside from debunking Uri Geller and 
various other psychics and uh, Peter Popoff was the one that, that really got me. Peter Popoff was one of those like faith healers, like come up and I'll touch you and you'll be healed kind of people. And you know, oh, and oh, and put your put your social security check in the in the uh, uh, collection plate, you know. Okay, pitter patter, bud. Oh my goodness. Uh, and he, what he would do is people would fill out a card with their information, and then like his wife would read their information to him. Over a, a earpiece, like on a, on a you know shortwave radio, and so he would he would be like, "Oh, the Lord has told me all this stuff about you, and what what's wrong with you?" Right? They would write down what they were, you know, going to be no, uh, what they were there for to be healed for, right? And in one instance, at least. Oh, like he, so James Randi and his like crew recorded the shortwave radio communications and like the, his wife was like, no, no, that one right there, like the, the woman in the third row, the, that N word, like that N word. And you're like, wow, that palette it's it's not like a just a scam like that's what you really think of these people you the people who are coming and you're scamming them and it it I, like it's like really dark shit like people might not like James Randi because he's always being like a skeptic and you know he, he I believe he was an atheist and stuff but it's like that's dark as shit. Like, these people are coming to you for help, and this is what you think of them. Not only are you not helping them, you hold them in contempt. That's disgusting. Like, that's disgusting in a way that, like, you, like most people don't even think that way. Like, like that is shockingly, like, like awful. And uh, Randy helped shut him down. Now, pop off his back. He sells holy water over, you know, TV commercials and stuff that will heal you or whatever, because the grift never stops. But, uh, I don't know, James Randi, I gotta give him some props, he came out as a gay man in like his 80s or something, like, uh, he kinda got taken for a ride by his, uh, I don't know, what do you call it, his lover? For as much of a skeptic as he was, he kinda got, uh, tricked by a a uh, fraudster, uh, because he, I don't know, I guess he was in love, I don't, I don't know, I don't know to, how to, I don't know how to frame that, but, I know, I, I'll, I'll link some talks and things from, from Randy, and you'll see what I'm talking about, how to think critically and not be fooled, all right, that's enough from me for a Monday, day 233, talk to you guys later, bye.